testing and commissioning for installation, cable laying, and termination works in the rail industry is a critical phase of any rail infrastructure project. It ensures that the installed systems are functioning as intended, meeting safety standards, and are ready for operational use. This phase involves a series of systematic activities to verify and validate the functionality, reliability, and safety of the installed systems. Here's a general outline of the process. Firstly, preparation. Gather all relevant documentation, specifications, and drawings for the installation, cable laying, and termination works. Identify the testing and commissioning requirements based on industry standards, project specifications, and safety regulations. Next, test plan development. Develop a comprehensive test plan that outlines the testing procedures, methodologies, success criteria, and schedules. Identify the different types of tests to be conducted, such as continuity tests, insulation tests, functionality tests, etc. Pre-testing activities. Pre-test is done to ensure that the installation, cable laying, and termination works comply with design specifications and safety standards. Checks are performed to verify adequate cable routing, secure termination, and labeling. Next, testing activities. Continuity tests will be carried out to ensure that cables have been correctly linked and that there are no breaks or short circuits. Insulation resistance tests will be carried out to confirm that no leakage routes exist between conductors or between conductors and ground. Following that, functionality tests will be performed to ensure that the systems are functioning as intended. This may entail modeling different operational situations. Other tests involve integration testing. If the installation involves multiple systems such as signaling, power supply, communication, integration tests will be carried out to ensure seamless communication and operation among these systems. Performance and reliability testing is another type of test to ensure the system's performance under different load conditions and scenarios. All testing procedures, observations, and variations from intended outcomes must be meticulously documented. Test reports will be generated to help provide a clear overview of the testing process and results. After which, if any issues are identified during testing, they are to be rectified and retested before moving forward. Next, workplace safety. Several potential risks have to be addressed throughout testing and commissioning processes. To limit the risk, an effective and comprehensive risk evaluation must be executed. Here are some instances, however they are not exhaustive. First and foremost, electrical hazards. The presence of live electrical circuits during testing and commissioning poses a significant risk of electric shock and electrocution. Contact with energized conductors, improper grounding, and inadequate insulation can result in severe injuries or fatalities. Implementing risk evaluation and safe work procedures to manage hazards and risks, as well as understanding common electrical symbols and labels, are some of the control risk reduction techniques. Personal protective equipment, PPE, for electrical work, such as insulated gloves, safety glasses, and arc flash suits, should be chosen and used appropriately. Lockout, tagout measures, which ensure that equipment is de-energized before maintenance or testing, as well as emergency response procedures in the case of an electrical incident, are examples of such processes. Next, arc flash hazards, faulty connections, inadequate insulation, or improper handling of high-voltage equipment can all contribute to arc flash incidents. Arc flashes release a significant amount of energy and could cause burns, blast effects, which can lead to death. Personnel must have a fundamental awareness of arc flash hazards incident energy and arc flash boundaries, interpretation of arc flash labels and PPE requirements. To minimize risks involved select and utilize arc resistant equipment. Safe working distances from exposed electrified items. Lockout, tagout methods for arc flash dangers, and so forth. Next, fire hazards. Testing and commissioning activities often involve working with electrical equipment and wiring, which can generate heat and create fire hazards. Short circuits, overloading, or improper installation can lead to electrical fires. 
adequate fire prevention measures, such as fire extinguishers and fire alarms, should be in place. Personnel must be equipped in recognizing common fire hazards in electrical installations, understanding the types of fire classes and the appropriate extinguisher that should be used. In addition, the management should implement emergency evacuation procedures in the event of a fire, as well as establishing a fire safety plan for the worksite. Next, noise and vibration. Some testing and commissioning activities, such as high voltage testing or equipment operation, can generate excessive noise levels and vibrations. Prolonged exposure to high noise levels can lead to hearing loss, while vibrations can cause musculoskeletal disorders. The use of hearing protection and vibration damping measures is important to mitigate these hazards. Next, ergonomic hazards. This hazard can pose significant risks to workers during installation, cable laying, and termination works. These hazards often involve lifting, carrying, and manipulating heavy objects, which can lead to musculoskeletal injuries and long-term health issues if not properly managed. Personnel should be trained in proper lifting techniques, mechanical lifting equipment should be provided, workstations should be designed to accommodate proper posture and reduce awkward positions and personnel should be rotated through different tasks to prevent overuse of specific muscles and reduce repetitive motion injuries. Management should encourage short and frequent breaks to allow personnel to rest. You should further assess what other hazards that may be present before commencement of your work activities. Identifying and mitigating these additional hazards is crucial to maintaining a safe work environment, risk assessments, regular safety audits, and ongoing safety training for workers are essential components of a comprehensive safety program. By meticulously following these steps and paying attention to every detail, the testing and commissioning works can be executed safely and effectively, ensuring the reliability and longevity of the electrical systems. We have reached the end of this presentation. We hope this basic overview will assist you to carry out the testing and commissioning work effectively and safely. Thank you and stay safe.